Thanks for dropping by for my daily devotions for Saturday, May the 6th, 2023. Keep asking what happened in 1967. I'm not 18 anymore, I figured. Um, <clears throat> we're going to look at Hebrews chapter 7, John chapter 3, great chapter. Psalm 144 and Ezekiel chapter 37, that's the dry bones chapter. So we got some fun stuff to look at today. And uh, I want to just start by reading the shortest psalm, Psalm 117. It's two verses. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol him, all you peoples. All nations and all peoples ought to be praising the Lord. Of course, they're not. But when they do, this verse 2 applies. For great is his love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Join in praising the Lord, you know, and his faithfulness extends to you. And um, and it endures forever. So that's where people need to be. We need to pray for that, 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 that the whole world would be praising the Lord. We would all be blessed in a big time. Let's pray. Father, speak to us as we look at your word and change our lives. God, apply your word to, to us with the power of the Holy Spirit. Make us fresh and new and different because we heard from you today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're looking at the seventh chapter of the book of Hebrews, which I'm going to attack and go through thoroughly in weekly messages. So one of these did pretty soon. This Melchizedek was king of Salem, priest of God Most High. He met Abraham returning from the defeat of the kings and blessed him. And Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. First, his name means king of righteousness. Then also king of Salem means king of peace. Without father or mother, without genealogy, without beginning of days or end of day or end of life, like the Son of God, he remains a priest forever. Just think how great he was. Even the patriarch Abraham gave him a tenth of the plunder. Now the law requires the descendants of the of Levi, who became priests, to collect a tenth from the people. That is their brothers, even though their brothers are descended from Abraham read better without my glasses. This man, however, did not trace his descent from Levi, yet he collected a tenth from Abraham and blessed him who had the promises. And without doubt, the lesser person is blessed by the greater. In one case, the tenth is collected by men who die, but in the other case, by him who is declared to be living. One might even say that Levi, who collects the tenth, paid the tenth through Abraham, because when Melchizedek met Abraham, Levi was still in the body of his ancestors. If perfection could be attained through the <clears throat> Levitical priesthood, for on the basis of it the law was given to the people, why was there still need, uh, still need for another priest to come, one in the order of Melchizedek, not in the order of Aaron? For when there is a change in the priesthood, there must also be a change in the law. He of whom these things are said belonged to a different tribe, and no one from that tribe has ever served at the altar. For it is clear that our Lord descended from Judah, and in regard to that tribe, Moses said nothing about priests. And what we have said is, is even more clear if another priest like Melchizedek appears, one who has become a priest not on the basis of a regulation as to his ancestry, but on the basis of the power of an indestructible life. For it is declared you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. The former regulation is set aside because it is it was weak and useless, for the law made nothing perfect, and a better hope is introduced by which we draw near to God. And it was not without an oath. Others became priests without an oath. And he became a priest with an oath when God said to him, The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever. Because of this oath, Jesus has become the guarantee of a better covenant. Now, there, there have been many of those priests since death prevented them from continuing in office. But because Jesus lives forever, he has a permanent priesthood. Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. For them. Such a high priest meets our need. One who is holy, blameless, pure, set apart from sinners, exalted above the heavens, unlike the other high priests, he does not need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for the sins of the, of the people. He sacrificed for their sins once and for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests men who, who are weak, 
but the oath which came after the law appointed the Son who has been made perfect forever. John chapter 3. I'm going to encounter good old Nicodemus. <clears throat> now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. Now, how can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water, that's natural birth, and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, that's natural birth, water, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound and you cannot tell where it comes from or where it's going. So it is with everyone born of the spirit. The spirit and word and wind are similar, okay? You can see their effect, but you don't see them. That's what. That's a lot of the point. How can this be, Nicodemus asked. You're Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and, and do you not understand these things? I tell you the truth, we speak of what we know, and we testify to what we've seen. But still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. So, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. John 3.17 is as important as John 3.16. He didn't send Jesus to condemn, but to save. Wow, I love that. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. Whoever does not believe in him is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what he has that what he has done has been done through God. After this, Jesus and his disciples went into the Judean countryside where he spent some time with them and baptized. Now John was baptizing at Anan near Salim because there was plenty of water and people were constantly coming to be baptized. This was before John was put in prison. An argument developed between some of John's disciples and a certain Jew over the matter of ceremonial washing. They came to John and said to him, Rabbi, the man who was with you on the other side of the Jordan, the one you, you testified about, well, he is baptizing and everyone's going to him. To this, John replied, a man can only receive what is given him from heaven. You yourselves can testify that I said, I am not the Christ, but I am sent, I am sent ahead of him. The bride belongs to the bridegroom. The friend who attends the bridegroom waits and listens for him and is full of joy when he hears the bridegroom's voice. That joy is mine and it is now complete. He must become greater, I must become less. That's what we all need to say about Jesus. He must become greater and I must become less. The one who comes from above is above all. And the one who is from the earth belongs to the earth and speaks as one from the earth. The one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard, but no one accepts his testimony. The man who has accepted it has certified that God is truthful. For the one whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for God gives him the spirit without for God gives the spirit without limit. The Father loves the Son and has placed everything in his hands. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever rejects the Son will not see life, but God's wrath remains on him. Psalm 144. Praise, this is a psalm of David. Praise be to the Lord my rock who trains my hands for war, my fingers for battle. He is my loving God and my fortress, my stronghold and my deliverer, my strength in whom I take refuge, who subdues peoples under me. O Lord, what is man that you care for him or the son of man that you think of him? Man is like a breath. His days are like a fleeting shadow. Part your 
Part your heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains so that they smoke. Send forth lightning and scatter the enemies. Shoot your arrows and rout them. Reach down your hand from on high. Deliver me and rescue me from the mighty waters, from the hands of foreigners, whose mouths are full of lies, whose right hands are deceitful. I will sing a new song to you, O God. On the ten-string lyre, I will make music to you. To one who gives victory to kings, who delivers his servant David from the deadly sword. Deliver me and rescue me from the hands of foreigners, whose mouths are full of lies, whose right hands are deceitful. Then your sons in your youth will be well nourished, well nurtured plants, and your daughters will be like pillars carved to adorn a palace. Our, boards will, our barns will be filled with every kind of provision. Our sheep will increase by thousands, by tens of thousands in our fields. Our oxen will draw heavy loads. They will, they will be no, there, there will be no breaching of walls, no going into captivity, no cry of distress in our streets. Blessed are the people of whom this is true. Blessed are the people whose God is the Lord. Boy, that's where America needs to be, doesn't it? Yep. In Ezekiel chapter 37, the Valley of Dry Bones. Hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley full of, full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, O sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied. That meant he spoke the word of the Lord to them as I was commanded. And I was, as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together bone to bone. I looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them and skin covered them and there was no but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the to the to the breath, prophesy that means speak the word of the Lord, Son of Man, and say to it, This is what the sovereign Lord says, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them, and they came to life and stood up on their feet a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel, and the people of God, in other words. They say, Our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. They are cut, we are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, This is what the sovereign Lord says, O my people, I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from them, I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man, take a stick of wood and write on it, belonging to Judah and, and, and the Israelites associated with him. Then take another stick of wood, write on it, Ephraim's sticks belonging to the Joseph and to all the house of Israel associated with him. Join them together into one stick that they may become one in your hand. When your countrymen ask you, won't you tell us what you mean by this? Say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I'm going to take the stick of Joseph, which is in Ephraim's hand, and of the Israelite tribes associated with him and join it to Judah's stick, making them a single stick of wood, and they will become one in my hand. Hold before their eyes the sticks you have written on. And say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I will make the Israelites out of I will, I will take the Israelites out of the nations where they have gone. I will gather them all from all around and bring them back to their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land on the mountains of Israel. There will be one king over them, and they will never again be two nations or be divided into two kingdoms. They will no longer defile themselves with their idols and vile images or with any of their offenses. For I will save them from all their sinful backsliding, and I will cleanse them. They will be my people and I will be their God. My servant David will be king over them, and they will all have one shepherd. They will follow my laws and be careful to keep my decrees. They will live in the land I gave my servant Jacob in the land where their fathers lived. 
they and their children, their children's children will live there forever. And David, my servant, will be their prince forever. And I will make a covenant of peace with them. And it will be an everlasting covenant. I will establish them and increase their number. And I will put my sanctuary among them forever. My dwelling place will be with them. And I will be their God and they will be my people. Then the nations will know that the Lord, then the nations will know that I, the Lord, make Israel holy when my sanctuary is among them forever. All of that kind of points to the day of the Lord. Wow, wow. Great, 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 great stuff. Let's pray. Father, thanks for speaking, making yourself clear to us. Change us, God, with the power of the Holy Spirit, by the truth of your word. As we hear you speak, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you. Have a great, great day.